We've got a team up here for this session. Um, hello, everybody. I'm Kerry Wynne Stanley. Um, and by now, because Darren's been so excited the last few days about this, you've all probably already have heard of what's been being referred to as TTF Tinder. Um, but what I'm going to do is put that into a little bit of context um, and, and why we've, we've, we've come to where we are today. Um, so as we've been speaking to people about the ITMF fund, one of the questions, oh, this isn't moving. There we go. One of the questions that we've been being asked is, how do I procure innovation? And the ITMF guidance, it talks about working with SMEs. It talks about using innovative solutions that demonstrate new technology. So it's not surprising that this is a question that keeps being raised. But how do you buy innovation if it's not comparable to something else? Or there's not equivalent products and services on the market where you can do a cost comparison? Or from another perspective, you want to enter an ITMF submission, but how do you connect with organisations who might have a solution to your problem? So this is where the TTF supplier directory comes in. So what I can clarify now is it's definitely not TTF Tinder, and there's no swiping right involved in using this system. On a serious note, um, you can find the directory on the TTF website. There's a link through the Signals funding page and also through the main menu. And the aim of the directory is to connect local authorities with supply chain organisations who can support with GLF, TSOG and ITMF project requirements, as well as the more wider local authority technology demands. The directory provides um, supply chain organisations with the opportunity to share information about products and services, the share links to website, but more importantly, share information about other uh, projects or other case studies that might be relevant to the, the signals funding process. You can search and you can filter the directory and you can do this around different um, areas of expertise and it's a live database that's growing every day. Um, it's been live for a day and a half and we've got over 45 organisations signed up and sharing their information on there already. So you can see why Darren's getting quite excited about people using this, um, this directory. So if you are a supply chain organisation, please do go on and add your details. It's a simple form to fill in. And if you're supply chain or local authority, please feel free to get in touch with El Craig and, and talk about how we can support you further with any of this uh, process around the signals funding. So now into the, the more fun bit as well. Once you've um, identified your organisation you want to work with, how do you buy from them if they aren't on one of your existing frameworks or contracts. And going back to the comment just made in the previous uh, presentation, we've been working with Crown Commercial Services to develop the Elkrig Innovation Procurement System. And this provides you with the opportunity to, um, to buy innovation. It's a fully compliant procurement route and it's very flexible and you can get suppliers on there and be, be purchasing your innovation in a matter of weeks rather than the months that were referred to in the, in the last presentation. The other key part to this as well is, rather than your procurement exercise being really heavily weighted on cost, the IPS is designed so that you can buy on quality, so outputs and outcomes are more heavily weighted in the procurement process, and this allows you to access innovative products and solutions that are ready to use, but are unique in the market, and then don't necessarily have comparable market costs out there. So through the partnership with Crown Commercial Services, the, the, the added value that we bring as Elkrig is that we can do things like the, the supplier directory, we can connect organisations together. We can also support with onboarding organisations onto the CCS systems and assist with model contracts for local authorities. So I'll hand you over now to Steve and Sandra and they'll talk to you in a bit more detail about the, the partnership and why the IPS is so relevant to Signals Funding Procurement. Thank you. Hello, Sandra Sewell, Crown Commercial Service. Um, my role is to um, build relationships, trusting relationships between local authorities in the main and Crown Commercial Service. Um, I'm on stage with my colleague Steve Sop. Steve's absolutely the brains of the outfit. So um, my role here is to talk about the partnership and how we got here, um, because I will move on to the next slide. 
Yay. So I, as I said, work with local authorities and I was at a cabinet meeting. This is pre-COVID. I was attending a cabinet meeting and I heard Elkrig and I thought, oh, I've not heard of them. Who's that? Googled it. I thought, that's really interesting. Um, I'd love to have a chat. So I first spoke to actually Darren and to Suzanne, and then we spoke to Martin Duffy, the um, ex-chief exec. Um, and Martin was so passionate about what he wanted to do. And we got talking, how could we work together? Because Martin's dream was one solution, innovation, bring in the SMEs, grow the suppliers, grow the market. But how... Did he get a route to market? How did he stop or slow down local authorities going out to market for the same thing? And we had a conversation about that. How could we do it? What could we achieve? Um, and it was a really, really, I would say, intense two years <laughs> for us to get to where we are. We went live in May 23. Um, and I think... Um, I hope that Martin's dream, um, and our partner's dream, um, is coming to fruition. It's still developing, we're gonna get there, but we're both, Steve and I are both extremely passionate about it. Crown Commercial Service is absolutely on board with it. We've got the support of the Department for Transport as well. So all in all, from a CCS perspective, we wanna bring the, the compliance and the procurement knowledge and the expertise in terms of that insight, but actually as a partnership, work together with Elkrig to support you. I'm gonna hand over to Steve. Good afternoon, Steve Sop, Crown Commercial Service. Get the hand, hang of this clicker. Right. Um, as Sandra said, it's taken us a bit of time to get to this point. Um, it's a little bit complex. It's taken three of us to explain it to you, so that gives you a sense of how complex it is. Um, I think it's, yeah, as, as Sandra said, we're really passionate about this. We recognise the need and we're looking to utilise the skills and experience of Elkrig and join that up with CCS commercial experience. Taken a while to get to this point. There's still a way to go. Um, we've got a, a kind of overview of what this system is uh, on the slide. It, it's more complex than that, but I'll kind of run, it, run, it, run you through it. Um, at the top, you know, you've got local highways facing challenges and needs. In this context, you're talking about traffic signal solutions, traffic signal innovation. How do you actually procure that? Well, if you're Transport for London, if you're Transport for Greater Manchester, national highways, then you'll have access to legal teams, commercial teams. You can go directly into CCS. You can work through other PBOs. Uh, you can go open market and procure solutions. If you're a local council, it might be a little bit more challenging. Um, so we're here to kind of look at how we can support you in collaboration with the sector experts. Um, so your, your challenge, your needs, your requirements, um, the, the, the partnership is setting up that kind of front door so that you can come into Elkrig, get the support, get the guidance, get templates, um, have that discussion about what requirements your, 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 what your requirements are. Um, you can also, I think Elkrig is, is building that sort of knowledge base across the sector as well. So it's about taking advantage of what works well, what other councils are doing, sharing that knowledge, and then feeding through into Crown Commercial Service. So you've got that sort of interface, a front door through Elkrig IPS into Crown Commercial. We're still doing a bit of work on that, um, that front door piece uh, to, to improve that so it's a more seamless customer journey. But basically, you've got access to Crown Commercial Framework, Crown Commercial Commercial Agreements um, through through that Elkrig front door. Um, you can see on the left hand side, there's that R and D trial test piece as well. So, working with Elkrig, we can understand where there is no market need, and we can test and challenge that, and put that to Darren and say, actually, look, there is no market ready solution out there. This is an area that really does need further investment. Um, so DFT, Innovate UK, et cetera, they've got some clarity on, on where, where that demand is, where, our, where that unmet need is. Um, following trial, test, pilot, then we can look at those successful solutions and we can get those uh, companies, those organisations onboarded onto our agreements. I'll talk a little bit about the difference between DPS and a framework, um, but they, they both have advantages in, in this space. 
And I guess it's worth also saying very quickly, I think there was a discussion yesterday about the lack of progress in moving from trial to commercial deployment. That's, that's been a theme. We talked about the, um, the, the kind of ITS activities that, that, that people have been involved in over the years. And there's always been a, a lot of interest in automation, in um, machine learning, et cetera. But we don't necessarily seem to see the deployment of those solutions happening as, as quickly as we'd like. Well, I, what we'd like to do with this solution is to try and help you guys to deploy, to access, uh, for suppliers to sell new innovative solutions to the public sector. Uh, this is going to test your eyesight. Uh, we'll make the slides available. Don't need to read the small print, but it's just kind of an overview of the four commercial agreements we're focusing on initially with our sort of partnership with, with Elk Creek. We've got Spark, DPS, uh, it's an innovation marketplace for emerging technology. Um, we've done some work on the filters so that we can get access to innovative companies that, that offer innovative road surface solutions, that offer, offer traffic signals solutions. Uh, we've got our core transport technology and associated framework uh, included within this provision. Um, huge capability, framework agreement. Those framework suppliers also include around 20 SMEs. Uh, and also amongst the suppliers, there's a whole supply chain supporting those SMEs. So across Spark and TTAS, you really have access to new market-leading solutions in the, in the space of traffic signals um, <clears throat> and the other themes that, that Elk Creek are really involved in. Uh, we've got a DPS on vehicle charging solutions, so that could be, uh, could be really important going forwards in the future. Look at how we um, build our collaboration across uh, Elk Creek on, on electric vehicle the whole electrification agenda. And also across CCS, we've got our construction professional services DPS in scope as well to give you that access to consultancy <coughs> advice around uh, some of the construction and infrastructure projects that you might be looking at. Uh, it's unique for CCS, actually. It's a first where we've had a partnership that is sort of multi-agreement uh, internally within CCS. So we've joined together a number of uh, different commercial teams to support this to support this initiative. Very quickly, I'm, you might have seen there are three DPS solutions in there and one framework agreement. Um, those of you that aren't commercial might, might wonder what the difference is. Here's a, a very quick overview. Uh, a dynamic purchasing system, a DPS system, is more flexible. It's designed with SMEs in mind, so it's easier to access for suppliers. Suppliers can be onboarded at any point, so it's always open. Uh, there's no limit on the number of suppliers that can be involved. It's a tiny bit more work for the customers in terms of you know, the pricing is, is actually not agreed up front, so it's part of that negotiation. Um, you'll need to do a little bit of work in terms of supplier capability, but it is more flexible. It doesn't allow, it doesn't have a sort of catalogue feature so that I, I, we, we call it sort of direct award. It's not necessarily direct award in the sort of pure procurement sense. It's a, uh, an evaluation based on price and quality, a sort of desktop evaluation that we do under frameworks. It's not permissible under a DPS, but nevertheless, the DPS has some advantages, particularly that always open point. Um, with a framework, if you're a supplier, you need to act fast. You need to get on that framework in a limited window before the framework goes live. It's then fixed. So TTAS fixed for, for its duration. TTAS expires in October 25, and we're actually doing some work at the moment. Our market engagement on TTAS replacement is underway. So just a quick plug, if you're a, a buyer of transport technology or a supplier of tr transport technology, um, please do get involved with our market engagement activity on the replacement for, for TTAS. We really want to make sure that we are offering um, the goods and services that, that you guys are going to be needing uh, over the coming years. Uh, and also that we've got that customer journey, the terms, conditions, the routes to market that, that are going to work for you. Um, frameworks, number of suppliers is, is uh, limited and, and fixed at the start. Pricing on a framework, we agree with the suppliers uh, maximum day rates. Um, so that's all defined, but you can get better rates in running a sort of call, a mini call off competition under the framework. So um, we've taken some of that work out for you. Again, with a framework, we've done the supplier assurance piece. So we've checked that they are capable of delivering what they say they're delivering. Um, with the framework, one of the advantages is we have a catalogue offer, what we call a catalogue offer. So suppliers can upload goods and services and you can do a quick desktop evaluation and purchase. So if there is something that you need that, that's um, urgent, you can use a framework catalogue to, to procure that. 
Uh, here's an example of some of the work we've done on Spark just to evolve the filters to make them more relevant to some of the needs that, that TTS have, TTF and uh, Elkrig have identified. Um, we've got a roads area. We can cover road, rail, air, and maritime. But if you select roads uh, under the delivery method, you can see we've got road surface solutions, innovative road surface solutions. We've got traffic signal sensing and control that's just been updated. Uh, encourage you if you're a supplier and thinking about some of those sort of innovative areas. If you're not on TTAS or not working with a TTAS supplier, then uh, do look at getting onto Spark to make your solutions available. As I said, Spark is is um, uh, designed with SMEs in mind. It's easier to access. Uh, as, a, as a buyer, you can look at the delivery location, and that's quite useful for some of those micro SMEs that might work regionally in a small space but, but may not offer UK-wide coverage. Um, so by selecting those filters, you effectively down-select from a, a whole list of suppliers to a smaller group, and then you can run a call of competition on the back of that. Um, as I said at the start, we're not quite there yet. Uh, we're on a journey. Uh, I, I, as Sandra and, and Kerry said, you know, we're all really excited about this. We see that need. We see where we can add value. Um, immediate next steps include a dedicated landing page, so that full integration between the Elkrig front door and the CCS uh, commercial agreements, really to make sure that you see that the, the information that you need to see as a highways authority looking to buy certain technologies. Um, at the moment, if you come into CCS, our agreements are designed with the whole of the public sector in mind. So there's templates and schedules that are relevant to MOD or relevant to the, to the devolved administrations. You don't need to see that. So that's some of the work that we're doing to try and make sure that that journey is really important, uh, uh, really clear for you. Um, new commercial agreements, so we've got, um, we're doing some work at the moment looking at the replacement for Spark. I mentioned TTAS, again, further plug, if you're a buyer or supplier, please get involved in our market engagement, make sure that the next version of TTAS works for the sector. Um, we're looking at doing improved guidance and information, I think that's one of the key roles for Elkrig, where they've got experience of the sector, they know what's happening, they can build case studies and make that available and adding additional core categories. Um, so at the moment, we're focused on road surface solutions and we're focused on traffic signal sensing control as a filter area. Uh, we're supporting those areas, but we're working together to look at how we expand that and, and promote, promote different, different areas. Um, that's it from me. Uh, I hope that was useful. Do reach out to Kerry, Sandra, myself for more information. Um, we're really excited about this. So I say, what we want to do is, is take that innovation, take that uh, novel technology and get it commercially deployed uh, and be that interface. Okay, thank you all.